The 2022 US Open is a day away and now it's time to preview and break down the men's draw. I'll go over all the potential matchups and predict whether we'll see a repeat of history or a new first time champion yet again here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today. Three-time US Open winner Novak Djokovic of course will not be playing this tournament due to him still being unvaccinated against COVID-19. Top seed Daniel Medvedev will start his title defense against American Stefan Kozlov and in the second round he could get Frenchman Arthur Rinderneck, Nicolas Pashlasvili in the third round, Roberto Bautista Agut round of 16, Felix Roger Aliassime quarters, Stefano Tsitsipas in the semifinals, and Rafael Nadal in the final. I don't see any big threats for Daniil in this little mini section. Bashalas Billy is his projected or first projected seeded opponent, but 19 year old Ben Shelton could cause some issues for the Georgian in round two. Shelton, who recently turned pro actually, had a breakout tournament at Cincinnati where he upset the world number seven, Casper Ruud, en route to the round of 16. I think the reigning NCAA champ can upset the 31st seed, but I do have Daniil progressing without much trouble regardless. Looking down, we'll Winner finalist Nate Kyrgios is on course to meet Roberto Bautista Agut in round three, but the Aussie has an interesting first rounder against good friend Tanasi Kakanakis. Tanasi is Nick's compatriot, best friend on tour, and doubles partner. The two actually won the Aussie Open men's title earlier in the season. On paper, Kyrgios is the better player and bigger favorite to win this match rather easily. However, this best friend dynamic could be interesting as Tanasi would know Nick's game probably better than anyone else. Also, Nick might struggle mentally with having to play his best mate. I believe Kyrgios will progress through that match, but I believe that potential matchup with RBA could cause some problems for the Aussie. These two actually played here last year and Roberto clobbered Nick 3-4 in love. Granted, Nick was not the same player as he is now, but RBA also dominated the 2020 ATP Cup match, so I believe this matchup could be difficult for the Aussie. Agu does play JJ Wolf in round one, and the American did take out Shapovalov in Rune at the City Open, so he could possibly cause problems. I do feel like the 16th seed will progress through both him and Nick to reach the round of 16. I have a feeling that Nick won't be all the way there mentally in New York, and I don't think that he truly cares for the slam, which explains his lackluster results here in the past. He actually told the press that he can't wait for this tournament to be over. Moving on, RBA does have a 4-1 head-to-head -head advantage over Daniel Medvedev, so an upset alert is definitely on the cards there. However, I believe best of five will help the Russian in that match, and thus a go with him to progress to the quarterfinals. At the top of Felix Auger Aliassime's section, there's Pablo Carreño Busta, who plays Dominic Team in round one. 2020 champ Team has been playing better recently, but is still not close to his slam winning form. Carreño Busta, on the other hand, is playing his best tennis right now, winning Montreal a few weeks back. The Spaniard's gonna be my pick to move through and make the fourth round. Bublik could be dangerous there, but he doesn't have a lot of form. Same with Alex Di Menor, who lost early in his three lead-up hardcore events. Felix's draw looks a bit tough. He's guaranteed to play or have a difficult second rounder match. Felix's draw looks a bit tough. He's guaranteed to have a difficult second round match with a rising star, neither Jack Draper or Emil Ruzuvari. Karen Hatchinoff is his first possible seeded opponent here, but he hasn't done much lately. I wouldn't be surprised if Alex Malkon upset him. Oja Aliassim has done well in New York in the past, and he actually made the semifinals here last year. He's also done very well this summer hardcore swing, coming close to making the finals of a few tournaments. I think his current form will carry him through to the quarterfinals. Fourth seed Stefano Tsitsipas starts against Colombian qualifier Daniel Galan and could play Lorenzo Sonego in the second round. Then he could face Maxime Cressy in the third, Berrettini in the round of 16, Casper Root in the quarters, Medvedev in the semifinals, and Nadal in the final. I think Steph's draw looks pretty fair overall. Alejandro Davidovich Falcona is a tough customer and had rough draws in the lead up events, but he can definitely do some damage. He plays Nishioka in round one, who did make their City Open finals. I'm having Davidovich Falcona play CC Paz in the third round instead of Maxime Cressy, where I believe the Greek men will prevail. Looking down, 
2012 champion Andy Murray draws 24th seed Francisco Sorondolo. Francisco did make the Miami Open semifinals, but the Argentinian hasn't had the best results on hard court since. Granted, his draws this summer haven't been the best, but I'm still having Murray advance. Matteo Berrettini is also here, and he really isn't full on confidence himself, losing in the first rounds of his two lead up events. His draw looks pretty good though, and he should be able to play himself into form. Also, Berrettini always performs well in slams, it seems like, and this is actually going to be his first slam since the Australian Open, so that would be exciting for him. Him. I think Murray can take out Berrettini, but I think fitness will be a factor there, and thus I'm choosing the Italian. Then, due to his superior form, I believe Stefanos will advance to the last eight. Casper Root section is next to observe, and he has a very, very tough draw. At the top, there's Taylor Fritz, who should move through his little mini section, while Frinka is there, but he isn't playing anywhere near his best right now. Last year's breakout quarter finalist at the US Open, Botic van de Zanschloot, is dangerous, but Fritz is better and should win that match. Root, meanwhile, starts against Brick Kyle Edmund, who's making his comeback from injury. Casper could then be grass swing breakout star Tim Van Greethoven, who plays his first tournament back from a back injury. Should he reach it, in round 3, the Norwegian will likely face an American threat and Tommy Paul or Sebastian Korda. Paul has been more solid lately, so I'm having him move on and also upset Rude. Rude did do well in Montreal, but is still not as solid on the hard courts and is more susceptible to getting upset. Plus, I expect the home crowd to push either Paul or Korda to victory. Then I expect Fritz to clear whoever he plays in that fourth round as he's simply playing really high level tennis right now. Meanwhile, 8th seed Hubie Hercox has a decent draw, but Lorenzo Musetti in round 3 could be dangerous. The Italian has a tricky opener in Gofan before possibly Manorino, who just won Winston Salem. I'm going to choose the Montreal runner up to move through to the second week, large in part due to his draw advantage. Italian Yannick Center is on course to play Grigor Dimitrov in round 3, but the Bulgarian has injury concerns as he retired mid-match in Winston-Salem. I have Brandon Nakashima there instead to play the Italian with the 11th seed moving through there and past Hubert to make the quarterfinals. My reasoning behind this is Yannick seemingly performs better than the pole at slams and he has been knocking on the door to do some damage at the majors for a while. Third seed Carlos Alcaraz will start against fellow youngster Sebastian Baez before possibly playing talent Greek sport in round two, Borna Chorich in the third, Marin Cilic in the fourth, Hercox in the quarters, compared to Nadal in the semifinals, then Medvedev in the finals. This draw looks pretty difficult for Carlitos. The first notable threat obviously lies in Cincinnati champion Borna Chorich. Now, Bias is good, but I don't expect him to cause as many problems on the hard courts. Chorich is playing outstanding tennis at the moment, but I question whether he can maintain this form for two more weeks and for best of five. Chorich also recently had a minor injury issue with an ingrown toenail, so that's something to consider too. Now, Borna is capable of doing well in New York as he made the quarterfinals in 2020. However, I will be choosing 2021 quarterfinalist Alcaraz to prevail. Marin Cilic and Dan Evans will likely play one another in the third round, but I believe the Croatian will outlast him. 2014 champ Cilic could cause problems for Carlitos in the round of 16, but I expect the 19 year old to pull through there like he did in their Cincinnati Open match. American John Isner is unseated, which is an interesting sight. Usually he's at least in the 20s or 30s in terms of seeding. Isner had a good quarterfinal run in Cincinnati, plus Holger Rune has been struggling since the French Open, and so I'm going to pick John to pull off the upset should they meet in round two before having Nord prevail against the big American. Meanwhile, Andre Rublev opens against Winston and Salem finalist Laszlo Jere, which could be tricky. Another tricky customer for Rublev could be Denis Shapovalov in round 3, but he's gone on a bad streak since Rome. I expect the Russian to clear and beat Nori to make the quarterfinals. After 3 years, 2019 champion Rafael Nadal returns to Flushing and will start against wildcard Rinki Jaka. The spare could then play Alphon Karatsev in round 2, before Mimuri catch Matovic in the 3rd round, Diego Schwarzman in the 4th, Nori in the quarters, Kali in the semis and Nevedev in the finals. Nadal doesn't have a lot of recent match play on the hard courts, only playing one lead up event where he fell to eventual champion Borna Chorich in the first round of Cincinnati. However, I do believe his draw will allow him to 
work himself into form like he's done many times over the course of his career. Fonini and Karasev could be difficult in round two, but neither are in top form, so I doubt that they will cause him much problems. Miriam Kachmanovic is skilled, but I don't think that he can keep that high level for best of five to beat Nadal. Rafa is projected to play Diego Schwartzman in the fourth round, but I believe he'll get Francis Tiafo instead, as the American has been playing well this summer lead up. I don't think the matchup would favor Big Foe, so I'll have Rafa winning that one to make the quarterfinals. For my predictions, in the semifinals, I have Felix and Taylor playing, and then Yannick and Rafa. In the championships, I predict we'll have a Fritz Nadal rematch with Rafa taking the title. The biggest snub here was probably top seed Dino Medvedev, who's made it to the last four New York for the past three seasons. I don't have this trend staying alive here in this preview because while he's looked pretty solid this summer hardcore swing, he's appeared more vulnerable as opposed to the last few seasons. I believe FAA has been knocking on the door for a minute now to break through at the slams and really should have been Medvedev at the Australian Open this year. I think this time will be his to take that further step. I'm confident in my prediction that Kyrgios won't go deep for the reasons that I mentioned earlier. Fritz is another player in store for a big slam result and I feel like with how he's played this summer and at Indian Wells, it's only fitting that he make his first stunt final here in New York. His draw is also very tough, but I think that if he continues to bring his game, he can definitely do it. I have Sinner coming through to take out Carlitos because he seems to have the Spaniards number as of late as he took their last two encounters. I really feel like it's a toss up between Nori and Rublev, but I'm not so sure that that pick would be a huge defining one in the grand scheme of things because I have Nadal progressing and ultimately taking it all. Like I mentioned earlier, Nadal has limited hard court match play right now, only playing one match, but he has two things going for him. For one, his health, and then two, his rather comfortable draw. I think both things will be instrumental for him later on in this tournament and should both hold up. I see him making even more history two weeks from today. Now, predictions aside, here's a list of all the first round popcorn matches you should look out for. Now, this list is even worse than the women's because there's just honestly not a lot of juicy first rounders here. Hopefully, we get a lot of their projected meetings later on to really pique the public's interest. That's all I have for the US Open men's tournament preview, and let me know what you think about the draw and my predictions in the comment section below. Do you think the Daw and Fritz are solid picks? If not, who do you think would be in the finals and ultimately win it all? Also, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever I post US Open updates and even vlogs of me on the grounds. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today.